Hello, I'm Mary Catherine Severe, and along with Leslie Collum, I am co-president of the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. On behalf of the League, I am pleased to welcome you to this candidate forum sponsored by the League in partnership with the City of Murfreesboro. We appreciate the support from Murfreesboro City Government provided by Alan Bozeman, Director of Communications for the City of Murfreesboro and his staff. This forum can be viewed on Murfreesboro City TV, located on Comcast Xfinity Channel 3 and 1094, Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, YouTube, and Facebook, as well as on the City of Murfreesboro's website. We hope the broadcasting and streaming of the forum by the City on so many different platforms will reach the largest possible number of interested voters. The League seeks to conduct our forums in a nonpartisan manner. Key participants, especially the moderator, are never publicly aligned with any particular candidate or political party. The League believes that televised and streamed candidate forums provide an excellent opportunity for voters to become more familiar with the candidates and their positions. If you agree with us, please express your opinion about the value of televised and streamed candidate forums to the individuals seeking your vote. In the upcoming August 4th election, citizens of Murfreesboro will be voting to elect a mayor, city council, and city school board members. Early voting starts July 15th and runs through July 30th. If you are interested in obtaining an absentee ballot for the August 4th election, please go to the Rutherford County Election Commission website. You can find that at election rutherfordcountytn.gov to learn about that process. We thank you for your attention as you hear these candidates introduce themselves and answer questions about pertinent issues facing the city of Murfreesboro. We hope you will find this forum useful in deciding which candidates you choose to support. Your vote gives you a prime opportunity to influence how government is conducted in the city of Murfreesboro. Thank you for joining us and remember your vote counts. Good evening. My name is Barbara Ibarra, and I will be serving as the moderator for this particular candidate forum. As Mary Catherine stated, this forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro, Rutherford County, and the City of Murfreesboro. The League believes that candidate forums provide an excellent way for voters to become more familiar with candidates and their positions. It is my pleasure to welcome both our candidates here at the Murfreesboro City Council Chambers and you, our viewers, at home to this program. This evening, we will be hearing remarks from the candidates for the Murfreesboro City Schools Board. But before introducing the candidates, I would like to outline the procedure for this forum. Each candidate will be asked to make an opening statement in a two-minute period. When all candidates have completed the opening statement, then several additional questions will be asked. The candidates will respond to each of those questions with a one-minute answer. The candidates will be allowed another two minutes to answer the last question and make any closing remarks. I want to thank all of the candidates for their gracious acceptance of our invitation to this particular event this evening. And we will now begin by introducing you to the candidates, and they have each two minutes for their opening remarks. I will begin with Ms. Karen Dodd. Okay. Hello. I want to make sure I'm not too close to this. Uh, anyway, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, and uh, I am Karen Dodd, and I'm a current uh, classroom teacher. I teach at Central Magnet School, uh, which I want to say is the number one high school in the state of Tennessee. Just want to throw that in there. And also, I have 25 years experience. I, am, I have a math degree, uh, that's a bachelor's degree, and I have a master's degree in education and curriculum and instruction. And I'm currently, uh, this is why I have bags under my eyes, because I got up at 5 o'clock this morning to go to Austin P. 
uh, I am taking classes there to get another master's degree. So I do like continuing education. Um, I, I, I wanted to be here today to let everyone know where I stand on things. I think the questions that are gonna be presented here are wonderful, good questions. And uh, I did want to say that uh, I have two wonderful children and they both attended city schools and we had a great experience. City Schools has wonderful, wonderful teachers and administration. My son, who's now, he's 20 now, he goes to Motlow. Uh, he went to Discovery School, uh, loved it, K through five. And my daughter went to Irma Siegel and um, she went there K through five as well. And uh, we loved it. We had a wonderful, wonderful experience. And that's uh, one of the reasons I would love to be on the board. It's because Mercerville City is awesome. Thank you very much. Miss Barbara Long, please. Good evening. Thank you for um, hosting this event. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Barbara Long, and I'm a native of Murfreesboro. I attended Hobgood Elementary and Central Middle School and uh, Oakland High School. I have a master's degree in uh, early childhood education and uh, elementary education from MTSU. I taught for 31 years at McFadden Elementary School. I helped write the curriculum that the current magnet school is using. I have served uh, on many leadership teams as most teachers do, um, accreditation teams and textbook committees, um, grade level teams, literacy teams, uh, endless. I had a rich, amazing, rewarding uh, educational uh, career and I and I would just encourage anyone to uh, to get into education I retired in 2016 and then I mentored um, first uh, first grade teachers first year teachers in, at Hobgood uh, my husband was a pastor for 41 years dr. Tony long uh, I have um, a servant's heart and I want to serve my community I'm a conservative Christian. I use my faith and my values in order to make my decisions along with my educational experience. And um, I have two daughters and five brilliant grandchildren, of course. <laughs> I look forward and would love to serve on the Murfreesboro City School Board. Thank you, Ms. Long. Ms. Amanda Moore, please. Good evening, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this event. My name is Amanda Moore, and I'm running for re-election to the school board for Murfreesboro City Schools. I've served on the school board for the past four years, and it has been a four years like no other. We lost our director of schools, Dr. Linda Gilbert. We hired a new director of schools, Dr. Trey Duke. We rezoned twice because of the relentless growth of Murfreesboro, and we navigated a global pandemic. Through all these difficult decisions, I have worked really hard to be transparent and accessible and fair. By transparent, I mean that I can justify the votes that I take. I can let people know the information that I looked at and how I ended up weighing out on decisions. That's being transparent. Being accessible means that people can reach me and I reach out to people. I can't serve the public if the public can't find me. So it's been important to me to be accessible as well and fair. To me, every child in Murfreesboro City Schools has the, requires some sort of education equity. They're individuals, they have individual needs to meet their potential and their growth for achievement. And that's what I want our school system to do, to be fair. So when I'm not on the school board, I'm, in a, I'm a lawyer, an attorney here in Murfreesboro. I'm the co-founder of a law firm, the Tennessee Center for Estate and Elder Law. Um, I have a lot of involvement with public schools. I have two kids who are in public schools here in Rutherford County. One's at Oakland High School and one's at Central Magnet School. Ms. Dodd's math student this year. Um, and my husband is a librarian at Middle Tennessee State University. Both my parents were public school teachers and I went to public schools for my whole education through college until I went to law school at Yale Law School. So I'm asking for your vote uh, for August 4th or during early voting remember when you vote I would ask for you to vote for more for city schools thank you thank you miss Moore and now for miss Florence Omachonu good evening I am very grateful for this opportunity to meet you and for you to know me in person 
and thank you for taking the time to come. I am Dr. Mrs. Florence Omachano, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, as well as a compassionate educator and change agent. I have over 30 years of experience as a former public school teacher, director, and a college professor. I have taught at the Leon County Schools in Tallahassee, Florida, Middle Tennessee State University, and more recently, the University of Wisconsin, Plyville, Wisconsin, just to name a few. In my cumulative years of experiences in teaching, academic administration, and, okay, I got a red flag, let me go quickly. <laughs> in academic uh, administration and advocating for appropriate uh, developmental experiences for young children, elementary grade students, and college students in the field of education have provided me the chance to participate in planning and implementation of educational programs. In my years of practice, I have served in different capacities including but not limited to curriculum and instruction, literacy and language arts, and institutional review boards. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will now turn to the first of five questions. Please remember, candidates, that you have one minute for each of these answers. So Ms. Long, we will start with you, and the question that you all will answer is, what do you feel is the most important issue facing Murfreesboro City Schools in the next five years, and how would you address that issue? Ms. Well, Long. One of the most important um, issues that we're facing right now is growth. Mm -hmm. um, we have to get ahead of that. We have to look ahead. We have to recruit and um, retain uh, amazing staff and teachers. Uh, we have to close the learning gaps between uh, math and reading due to the COVID absenteeism. Um, our rapid growth in our city is hard to keep up with, with the number of students entering our schools every year. We have to broaden our view and give incentives for um, education majors and draw them to Murfreesboro City Schools. Uh, we have to support our teachers and our staff and help them carry their workload. Thank you very much. Ms. Moore, what do you feel is the most important issue facing Murfreesboro City Schools in the next five years, and how would you address that issue? So this is a really interesting question because I think from the school board level, looking at things from sort of on high, Growth is absolutely an important issue that we face. Um, it's the thing that gives us heartburn at night, how we're going to handle this growth. But when you go into the buildings and you talk to people who work in our schools, growth is not their priority. The thing that we heard repeatedly this year from our teachers and our staff, the issue that needs the most attention is of behavior and mental health. And so, uh, you know, our teachers told us during the budget process that this was something that we really needed to focus on as a board. They couldn't teach the kids if the kids weren't calm and present and ready to learn. So what we did this year as a school board that I think we will continue to do going forward and we should continue was to put resources toward behavior supports and mental health supports in our schools, both with additional staff and with additional training for our teachers so they are equipped to handle the issues that our kids are facing right now. Thank you very much, Ms. Moore. Ms. Omashanu? What do you feel is the most important issue facing Murfreesboro City Schools in the next five years, and how would you address that issue? Murfreesboro is one of the fastest growing cities in the state. So is the population of school-aged children. To address this issue, we need to have a long-term strategic plan for building and maintaining facilities, as well as recruitment and retention of teachers and administrators. And to solve this, we need to, rec okay, we need to recruit 
teachers who are innovative and who have good strategic plan in challenging our students to think and take them to those metacognitive processes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Ms. Dodd, what do you feel is the most important issue facing the Murfreesboro City Schools in the next five years and how would you address it? Okay, so definitely growth. Some of my answers have already been said, so I think we agree on a lot of things, but growth on the west side, um, you know, I've done my homework, I've looked around, uh, and, and growth on the west side is, is, is crazy. And it, it's, there's gonna have to be another school, I'm sure. And uh, I guess, you know, of course, I know rezoning is not always something that anyone wants to do, but we, we definitely will have to look at the growth on the west side. Uh, also, something that Ms. Moore said is the emotional um, st state of, our, of the kids because, you know, they, if they're not taken care of emotionally, they're not going to be able to learn, okay? And this, that also leads to inappropriate behaviors as Ms. Moore mentioned as well. And the inappropriate behaviors means that the teacher is uh, you know, worried about the inappropriate behaviors and not worried about the teaching. And so everyone suffers if that happens. Thank you very much. And for our next question, we will begin with Ms. Moore. What role do you think a local school board should have in the charter school approval process? Well, um, the school board just took a look at this recently. We just passed a slate of policies within the past couple of months governing how we as a school board will handle it when we, I think it's when, not if, we receive our first charter school application. Um, we have appointed a team that will review and evaluate those applications. I was appointed to be the board liaison, the, the board member on that team. What we will do is review the application. We will make a recommendation to the board either to approve or to reject or to reject with stipulations that charter school application. Um, if the charter application is approved, then the board's duty is to evaluate that charter school at least annually. Um, we have to make sure that it's high quality, that it's transparent, that it's fiscally responsible, and that it follows the State Board of Education's guidelines. If the charter school doesn't do that, then the board has to follow through with the agreed upon consequences, which can include closure of the charter school. Okay, thank you. Ms. Omachanu, what role do you think a local school board should have in the charter school approval process, please? As granted by the state, the local school board has the authority to receive and review all charter school applications. Therefore, in the approval process, it is the role of the board to ensure that the curriculum and other operating procedures meet the needs of the students and are accountable, they are held accountable like other city schools. But what is my boggling for me is this. If charter schools are regarded by the state as public schools, then why have charter schools. What does a charter school offer that all public schools cannot do? This must be researched. Thank you. Ms. Dodd, what role do you think a local school board should have in the charter school approval process, please? Well, just a question to think about is do we need them? Uh, Typically, they go into districts that are low performing and need help. Mercer City is not low performing and I feel like we don't need their help. But having said that, uh, the application can be turned down by the local school board and they can go to the state and uh, get approval. So I do think that if that happens, we'll have to deal with that. And uh, as others have said, we need to work with them. If they, if they do come into our district, we need to work with them on setting some standards. Uh, are they gonna be hiring certified teachers? They need to provide transportation. Uh, there's lots and lots of issues, and I don't have much time left. So lots of issues that need to be addressed, and hopefully we can work with them if we are forced to take them, then we can work with them uh, and could do some compromising and making sure, I mean, the students in their schools are our 
they're our students, they're our community, and we need to take care of them. Thank you, Ms. Dodd. Ms. Long, what role do you think the local school board should have in the charter school approval process? You know, I am so proud of our local schools, our Murfreesboro City Schools. I'll put any of our schools up against any charter school. Defunding one program in order to enhance another is not a solution. I'm not intimidated by charter schools. I'm told they're coming. Um, the, it is beneficial for us to work alongside them for the greater good of Murfreesboro if they are approved. And uh, we can learn from each other, hopefully. The school board needs a seat at the table. We need to ensure high standards and accountability at the local level and at the state level to make sure that they are doing their job. Thank you. Ms. Omarshanu, the question next is, what specific measures would you propose to increase safety and security at the Murfreesboro City Schools? What, what, what is in place, to me, I would support whatever is in place right now. In addition to that, I would recommend that if we see any red flag teachers, members of the community, we should report it immediately to law enforcement. Thank you. Ms. Dodd, what specific measures would you propose to increase safety and security at the Murfreesboro City Schools? Well, it's, we already have SROs, Murfreesboro, in all the schools. And uh, I believe, you know, we have measures in place, but I think they break down sometimes because we get comfortable. Um, I think we need an updated safety training every year for everyone in every school. That even means the custodians because the custodians can leave a door open, you know, to, I don't know, wheel something in and leave it open. That's, that's the way an intruder can get in, okay? So also, as far as checking people in, you know, you, everybody has the little thing where they look at your ID and then they buzz you in. I have seen this happen. Bump, and they get buzzed in automatically. And no one really looked at that ID. It happens. And even as a teacher several years ago, I have left a door propped open. And, you know, we get lazy. We get, you know, teachers have so much that, to think about. And so uh, I think the updated safety training is what we need right now. Okay. Ms. Long, what specific measures would you propose to increase safety and security at the Murfreesboro City Schools? You know, it's a tragedy that we even have to be talking about this, but with every tragedy, we can learn from it. And it's a heart issue, it's a mental health issue. And until our culture decides to live by moral values, none of this is gonna change. But there are some things that we can tighten up on. Fortunately, our Murfreesboro City School System has an amazing um, program already in place, SRO officers in every school, drills, safety entrances, and that sort of thing. But it's time to, it's time to, uh, to tighten up and to make sure that every door is maintained, every lock is maintained, that walkie-talkies are in use, that the uh, communication system is loud enough for everyone to hear the alert. And then um, SRO, SRO officers are already looking in all of that as well. Every, all 13 schools need to be fully equipped to uh, make sure that our children are completely safe. Thank you, Ms. Long. Ms. Moore. What specific measures would you propose for the safety and security at Murfreesboro City Schools? I know this is an issue that is obviously on the forefront of everyone's minds right now after the events of the past couple of weeks. Um, I want to reassure the public that the safety of the kids in Murfreesboro City Schools is paramount to us. We just passed a new five-year strategic plan and safety is one of the four main parts of that plan. We have um, officers in every school. They're there for security. They're not there for discipline. We have a good partnership with the Murfreesboro Police Department. We have a plan with them that I don't even know because we keep it secret for security reasons. We have extensive policies and procedures in place to keep our kids safe. This issue is very personal to me. I know it can happen anywhere because it happened at my high school in 2018. It was a fatal shooting a few weeks before Parkland. But I want to say this to people. 
Schools did not create this situation and we cannot solve it on our own. The things we are doing are just band-aids. So I want to encourage you, whatever it is you think is the reason for this school violence, think about that when you vote for issues beyond the school board. We're doing what we can, but we can't solve this alone. Thank you. We will begin the fourth question with Ms. Dodd. Given the new funding formula for Tennessee schools as stated in the Tennessee Investment and Student Achievement Act, what would be two of your spending priorities for the Murfreesboro City Schools? Uh, first, I have read up on this. Of course, we don't know. How, it doesn't start until 2023, but I have been looking into this. And uh, as far as Murfreesboro City, uh, Mercerville City will get some money and it will be it will benefit Mercerville City Schools. But I think that support staff at the schools is what's needed. Uh, try to get some of the load off the teachers' backs. You know, as a school teacher myself, I understand this and I'm a current school teacher. So I know the load, especially now, is tremendous. And we need to get some support staff in there to help them. What that's gonna look like, I don't know. We would have to discuss that and talk about it, but that's what I think we need. We need support staff in the schools, not sitting at central office. We need support staff in the schools helping the teachers uh, take that load off. That's, I think, some of the money needs to be spent for that, for sure. Thank you very much, Ms. Dodd. Ms. Long, uh, given the new funding formula for the Tennessee schools, as stated in the Tennessee Investment and Student Achievement Act, what <laughs> would you suggest being some of the spending priorities for the Murfreesboro City Schools, please? Um, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is, you know, as um, Ms. Dodd has said, you know, it's not coming until 2023, and a lot of things can happen between now and then. From what I understand, we're to, we're to gain about nine million dollars uh, in Murfreesboro City Schools. That sounds like a lot of money, but when you start spreading it uh, through all of the needs, then it get it uh, it narrows down. I've studied the the plan, and it uh, it promises to fund uh, recruitment and high achievers and low achievers and um, uh, you know lots and lots of different uh, areas of need, I would suggest smaller class sizes if we can funnel some of it in that direction, uh, especially for Title I funded schools, and then extra guidance counselors and social workers in those schools that are needed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Moore? Given the new funding formula for the Tennessee schools stated in the Tennessee Investment and Student Achievement Act, what would be some of your spending priorities for the Murfreesboro City Schools, please? Uh, well, I'm cautiously optimistic about this new funding formula that it will be better for Murfreesboro City Schools than the current funding formula, which is the BEP. Um, lots of questions still to be resolved, so it's still kind of a, a cautious optimism. As far as what we would spend this on, you know, we just went through a big budget process. We do this every year in city schools. And this year we had a lot of input from teachers and other members of the community and our schools. I reached out, also was just open to people to contact me. And two of the main themes that we heard from people involved with schools, what they would like to see more funding on were academic intervention. So really drilling down to those needs for academics, for teaching in our schools, focus on where we have gaps and put staff in place who can help with that. And we're able to do that this year. We funded 20 new EA positions, education assistants, just for intervention. The other thing, again, is that behavior and mental health piece where we could put more funds toward making sure we are fully staffed in all our schools to meet those needs. Thank you. Ms. Omashanu. Given the new funding formula for the Tennessee schools as stated in the Tennessee Investment and Student Achievement Act, what would be a few of your priorities for the Murfreesboro City Schools? Well, it is my understanding from reading and conversation with people that this new funding formula covers everything and more compared to the old formula, the basic uh, education program approach. What I would like to see and stand for is equal or fair distribution of state fund. But priority for me will be high quality professional development for staff and for teachers and staff. And, but there's another thing that is uh, troubling me concerning this uh, fund. 
What is not clear to me is this. I need what, what constitutes econo economically disadvantaged students? And how is the state allocating the, the money to different school districts? That needs to be clarified. I, oh, mm -hmm. stop. <laughs> Thank you very yes. much. So candidates, we are now approaching the very last question. Please remember that you will have two minutes to respond to this question and also provide any closing remarks within that two minutes. So the last question, and we will begin with Ms. Long, is why are you running for the school board and what do you hope to accomplish during your first term in office if elected? I want to get involved in the good work that the Murfreesboro City School Board is already doing. They're, they're doing some amazing things and we have the best system uh, that I've ever seen. Um, I want to bring some fresh ideas to the table and some solution. I want to use my experience um, to um, think through solutions and see how they affect the classroom. I know what works and what doesn't work because I've been in education for 31 years. I want to be an advocate for children and teachers and taxpayers uh, and promote parent partnerships because it is a partnership between the child, the teacher, and the parent. Uh, I want to make this the best possible district, uh, you know, that there, that there is. I want to make sure that I leave it better than I found it. So, uh, you know, to evaluate how programs are being used and, uh, and how those decision making, uh, how it drills down into the individual classroom. That's important. Um, I want to bring my expertise to the discussion and some fresh eyes and ears. Um, I want to promote that partnership with parents, as I said before, and the best practices in the classroom bring the best resources possible to Murfreesboro City Schools and to the teachers and staff. I would appreciate your vote. I will do my very best to uh, serve this city well and um, to make sure that I'm available for issues and solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Long. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Moore? Why are you running for the school board? And if elected, what would you hope to accomplish during this next term? Well, <clears throat> I'm running for school board because after serving for four years, I feel like I'm ready to hit the ground running um, and keep pushing this district in a good direction. Um, in spite of the difficulties of the past four years, we have made some good progress in city schools. At this time, eight of our 13 schools are now STEM designated. The board and the administration just went through a long process to develop a five-year strategic plan that I know is not sexy, but I'm very excited about it because what it means is we have a set statement of our priorities that we have all agreed on, and that can help us make the best decisions when we face these tough choices and make sure we're all rowing the boat in the same direction. We have a, a good relationship between our Board of Education and our Director of Schools. We have a very functional uh, school board right now that works together very well. I know this is hard work, but I'm willing to keep doing the hard work and keep pushing for our students to excel and for this district to move forward. As far as changes that I would like to see, when you look at our data and you really drill down into the data, you can see that there are persistent gaps in growth and achievement for what we call subgroups, which refers to students when we look at them demographically, whether it's by race, whether it's by economic circumstance, by English uh, proficiency or by disability. And it's really important to me that we focus on that and closing those gaps. I don't want any of our students for us to look at them on paper with their demographics and be able to predict their academic outcomes. So I want us to keep working on that. I've demonstrated uh, over the past four years through my experience that I'm capable of dealing with difficult situations that come up before the schools and I would like to continue to do that and to do that while being transparent and accessible and fair. So I'm asking for your vote on August 4th or during early voting July 15th through 30th. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the ballot. That's where you find city schools, school board and remember to vote more for city schools. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Ms. Omajanu, why are you running for the school board? And if elected, what would you hope to accomplish during your term in office? 
I am running for the school board because I feel that now is the time for educators to take ownership of our students, our children's education. And I have the mental capacity, ability, and requisite experience to do so. My motivation to run comes from innate passion and my personal interactions with colleagues in the field of education. There is a consistent pattern of attacks on public education that needs to be addressed in, in order for us to build excellence in our public school curriculum and standards, and also to foster public trust in the educational system. The question that we must address is this. Are we more concerned about preparing our children for our past or the future? Yet if I'm elected, what do I hope to accomplish? I hope to speak and stand for high quality professional development for teachers and staff, and I hope to promote meaningful involvement of parents and community at large, and I will speak and advocate for plans that promote a balance between home and school and both institutions should be held accountable for our children's growth and development. Thank you, Ms. Omachanu. And Ms. Dodd, why are you, oh, I'm sorry, were you not finished? I thought I, do I have, do I have sorry. time? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I have five seconds. Oh, quickly, I want to say thank you for having me, for my voice to be heard. I will work diligently with members uh, towards a tax forward tax-oriented purpose, and that we pursue all these goals without fear and favor. My apologies sorry, I for I thought my time was up. I, yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, Ms. Dodd, and why are you running for the school board? And if elected, what would you hope to accomplish during your term? Uh, well, I, um, I feel like that I can bring a unique perspective to the board. I think the board's doing an amazing job right now, by the way, but I do think that the addition of me would be wonderful and that <laughs> because I know, I know what teachers and students need right now because I'm there, I'm in the trenches. I, I go there every day, okay? Of course not in the summer. But uh, I do, I know what is needed as far as uh, resources for teachers. Uh, like I've said before, some support staff would be awesome to take some of the load off of them. Uh, but something else I would like to do is uh, to work on a more diverse staff. Um, I, I, you know, when you walk into a school or when you think of an elementary school teacher, you think of a, a white lady. You know, there's not that many male elementary teachers I think it'd be great if we could recruit some of them more. I know we have a few, but not that many. And then also uh, diversity, different races. Uh, because students, you know, we have a very diverse population. And students, you know, they want to look up there and see that role model, you know, and the same color, the same culture, the same, you know, that, that's, they want to see that. And I, I think we're kind of missing out on an opportunity there. Uh, for the Mercerville City Schools. But that's one thing I want to try to do too. And we need to be working with, uh, you know, local, com local universities to do that recruiting as, uh, as well. Also, we need to retain them with uh, better salaries, uh, benefits. So I just want, I'm about out of time. So I just want to ask for your vote. Uh, and I believe it's August the 4th, and uh, early voting, July 15th through the 30th. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes the school board candidate forum. And again, on behalf of the League of Women Voters and the City of Murfreesboro, I want to thank all of the candidates for your participation today. It's very important. I also want to direct, thank the Director of Communications for the City of Murfreesboro, Alan Bozeman, and his staff for helping in presenting this program on Murfreesboro City TV tonight and making it available for later viewing. 
I really want to encourage all Murphy's Borough citizens to vote. Early voting, as you've heard the candidates say, begins July 15th and it goes through July 30th. You may early vote at any of the early voting locations and on election day, which is August 4th, you will be able to vote again at any one of the voting centers in Rutherford County. To find out which location will be best for you, please visit the Rutherford County Election Commission or if you are interested in applying for an absentee ballot, please visit the Rutherford County Election Commission at election.rutherfordcountytn.gov. Also, don't forget to check out the vote411.org, an online voter guide developed by the League for more information about the candidates that came before you this evening and for other candidates that are running for office in Murfreesboro or Rutherford County. Please vote in this election and help determine who will be on the Murfreesboro City Board, School Board. Your vote does count, it's important. And may we please now close for those in the audience with a round of applause for the candidates who are here with us this evening. Thank you. <laughs>